Hi, I'm Lori with Quilters Headquarters in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I see a lot of information on Facebook and elsewhere on the internet about skipped stitches on your long arm. So I have decided that I'm going to do a little bit of a long arm series troubleshooting. And so this will be the first of several videos that we're doing. And what I want to explain to you today is the difference between a skip stitch and a long stitch. And there's quite the difference. So Bob, and Bob is uh, behind the camera with me today. He is our technician here as well. And so we've been in business 10 years now, Bob, and been long arming that long. We've had a total of five different brands of long arms. So don't blame it on the brand of long arm. When you get a new long arm, it's, um, it's a learning curve. So don't, don't expect it to run like your sewing machine. Um, this is a multi-directional machine. So it's not a sewing machine like you're used to. So there are some things to learn. So let's talk about skip stitches. So Bob, if you would zoom in on one skip stitch right here. This is a skip stitch. So you can see I was sewing along, the stitches look pretty good, and right there it, it, the needle went down. Um, if you don't touch it too much, you can actually see there's holes underneath there so where the needle went down and pierced the quilt, but it didn't make the stitch, okay? Now what a long stitch is, um, is when the needle does not go down. So let's, let's show them what that is here, Bob. So we'll do a, I had to work hard to, <laughs> to get it to not stitch. Hold on. So I'm gonna bring my bobbin thread a little bit longer so we can get it to, to sew. So I'm just bringing my bobbin thread up. There we go. So we're sewing along like so. Everything's good. And all of a sudden it does this when it, when it just doesn't sew. That is a long stitch, OK? It didn't sew at all. It, the needle did not go down. Um, so you will hear oftentimes on the internet, it's your encoder, it's your encoder, it's en your encoder. It's not your encoder if the needle is going down and piercing. It's your encoder when you're getting a long stitch like I just demonstrated. So what I did to get that long stitch is I just lifted my encoder up when I was moving the machine. So you need to know the difference. So when you're out on the internet and you're saying, help me please, what's going on? If it's piercing, you want to make sure you ask when you're asking your question, is it a long stitch or a skip stitch? Okay. If I've beat that dead horse to death now, I hope you understand that difference. So let's say it is not the encoder. You have a skipped stitch. Generally, a skip stitch is caused by needle deflection. Needle deflection is when your needle is coming down, but it's not hitting the hook back here. Okay, so that can't bring the thread up and around to hit the hook to put it to bring the thread back up. So check to make sure your needle is. I have a sheet that I follow, and I will post this sheet uh, down below. And this is troubleshooting stitch quality issues. So this will be the. Um, we're just talking about this now. So. Check to make sure your needle is pushed all the way up into the needle bar. So sometimes if you've just changed a needle and you didn't get your needle pushed all the way up, that can be an issue. You may need a new needle. Sometimes, and this has happened to me, I've put a new needle in, I'm still having problems. It's the whole package of needles. So go to a new needle. Um, is the quilt thicker than usual, like a denim or a t-shirt quilt? This can cause needle deflection. So try a bigger needle. I generally run um, I generally run an 18 needle, size 18. That um, 
if I'm using a thinner thread, I'm going to go to a smaller needle. Um, needle deflection can also occur if your quilt tension is too tight. So I don't mean your thread tension up here, I mean your quilt tension. So come down here, Bob, and look at the quilt here. So here is how my quilt sits. It sits fairly loose. All right. Maybe that's a little too loose. Okay. But if your quilt tension is pulled like like this, and you can bounce a quarter off of it, that's too tight. Okay, so that will cause needle deflection as well. Your quilt might be too high off the bed, and so what we mean by that, Bob, if you can come around here, so your quilt needs to be riding right along here, or maybe a quarter of an inch higher. Okay, you don't want it too high off the bed, you'll get needle deflection. You don't want it to drag on the machine bed. I need to come over here and loosen it a little bit because I have it way tight now. And we're working on our um, Kinec 15R today. This is a nice little nice little machine easy to reach behind which is what I like um, or your hopping foot might be too high so right here I like to have my my hopping foot now this isn't scientific but um, <laughs> I usually have it a fingernail off the highest point um, so like if you've got um, several seams coming together in one area I try to just get my fingernail under there and lift it that high. I know that's not scientific and you can take that advice or leave it, but it works for me. Um, if you have really thick seams though, you might just have to avoid those thick seams. If it's too high, you're going to get skip, stitch, skip stitches. If it's too low, you're going to get skip stitches. Three business cards is usually, I think, the standard that people say. I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up here. And then, um, as a last resort, your machine may need to be retimed. Bob, how often does that happen? Very, hardly at all. Hardly ever. So it takes a lot to get your machine out of time. S um, you will see advice on the internet, oh, it's your encoders, or you need time to retime it. That's not likely the case. So have I missed anything, Bob, about skipped stitches? I believe not. I think I've got everything. Okay. Um, oh, the needle turn. So the one way I got it to actually show you a skip stitch before we turn the video on was I turned my needle um, like some crazy angle. So Bob, if you can get right up in here again. Okay, so the groove of your needle on the front where your needle goes in, I don't know, you won't probably be able to see it, but there's a groove that goes all the way up. So your stitch won't pick up at all if you put your needle in backwards. But generally on a long arm, this is my needle magnet, and I generally have it turned the other way. So I was trying to get skip stitches so I am going to turn it. Can you see what I'm doing there, Bob? No. My hand's in the way? No. All right. So I've got my needle all the way up in the shaft, and I have this needle magnet right here, tiny little thing. I put it right on the flat side of my needle where the thread would go in, and I face it a little bit to my left. Some people call that 530. <laughs> that doesn't always make sense to me. But that's how you can tell if your needle is in there correctly. If it's straight on, it'll probably work as well, like that. I like mine a little bit like that. I get less wobbly stitches. If it's crazy off and you can't always tell, 
um, if you don't have a needle magnet. Some people will stick another needle in there. I don't like to do that because it just ruins the head and then you might, or the, the, the hole in the needle, the eye, and you might get shredded um, threads that way. So I just keep my needle magnet right here on my machine where I can always find it. If you need a needle magnet, we'll sell you one and send it to you for three bucks each. Um, just contact us at Quilters Headquarters. Okay, so long stitches. So long stitches is an encoder issue. That means the needle did not go down. Let's see, Bob, should we walk around back and show them what an encoder looks like? We're tethered today, so we have to go slowly. We're tethered with our cord here so that you can hear me. <laughs> I'm walking backwards. All right. So the easiest encoder to see is going to be this encoder right here. This is our vertical encoder. Did you, can you get it? Right here, okay? So this is the vertical encoder right here. The horizontal encoder is way... Where is it? <laughs> oh, it's on the inside. It's on the inside, so we can't show it to you. It's on the inside under here. Inside in the back. Yeah, Anything so... But that's the encoder that rides this way, horizontally. So if it is an encoder issue, it's likely, um, Bob, I'll let you maybe explain the encoder issues. What you want to first decide which direction it's happening. Is it going vertically or horizontally? You want to make sure your belts are engaged, right? Oh, no, I'm lying to you. If you have a computer. If you have a computer. But you don't need to do that on a computer. Okay. You just check that rubber. Yes. And then check the spring action. See if it's riding right on this yeah. rail. And then un unplug it and plug it back in. Sometimes it's just a connection. So plug it back in like here. Yeah. And then down here as well. Yeah. Okay. And what he means by these O-rings... Some some have an O-ring, some just have this rubber ring of some sort. It's not really an O-ring. They can be replaced. And then also check and make sure that your tracks are clean. So we clean ours weekly. Um, this machine is only demo, but on the one we do, well, we probably clean that one. The one we use every day, we clean every day. But check and make sure these you don't have lint or threads or anything like that on your rails or wound up somehow inside your encoders and the spring action. So that should take care of long stitches. I think I've covered everything for this video. If you have any more questions, you can give us a call or send us an email at lori, L-O-R-I, at quiltersheadquarters.com. You can call us at 605-334-1611, and I will post my troubleshooting tips uh, down below.